over 100 countries being impacted worldwide. A global revival coming forth. A great awakening. Media Revival TV. Impacting and transforming a generation to encounter the power of God. Eddie and Betty Cruz from Upper Room, where are you? Keep standing, keep standing. I, I, you know, anytime pastors are in my house, I always try to show honor because I know what you go through. <laughs> Frank and Irma and Klon from I Am Ministries, would you stand up as well? I know what you go through too. Is there any pastors that I miss that I want to honor to you today? Is there any other pastors? Uh, all y'all are just sons and daughters of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, listen, I'm not going to take any more time. Uh, you know what? God showed up. It took a little longer than usual, but hey, Amen. come take it. Come take it. Come on up. Amen. Who's coming first? You're going to break it and then she's going to take up the, the oil and the butter, right? Let her go. Let her go. What's up, man? I'm excited. I'm serious. There's just something burning inside of me right now. And I'm just like, whoa. Woo! Come on. Uh-oh. good am i even on am i good good oh god where do we start how about we start with just saying jesus we love you, jesus, we love you. and holy spirit we invite you, holy spirit, we invite you. <laughs> man you know what you know what's so amazing about god when he shows up is that when god shows up his power shows up his power shows up, and, and I want to I wanna, I wanna just release something that I saw during worship. Uh, there was a gentleman that was playing the drums right here, brother. Yeah, man, bro, I'll tell you what. I was like, you were playing, and you were going, you were just, you were hitting the drums hard, hard. And it was like, I was like, whoa, God, he's just beating the drums. And I'm, I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, why are you making this thing so loud for me? Why, do, why is he standing out? He says, I had him beating it like that. And then I began to see a portal open up right above you, bro. And this portal said that there was, there was pockets of revival that was going to be birthed in this place, bro. And I saw it. There was a point in time in, in your worship, you guys were going into this little riff, man. And it was like a revival Music, dude, it was just amazing. And that was at the time that I saw that, bro. So I really believe that God is about to really step you guys up. The whole worship in a place of, man, you guys get ready because I feel like you guys are going to be hosting this presence. I hear that. I, that's what I'm hearing, like hosting my presence. Yeah. And it's going to be so amazing and so powerful. People are going to be coming out here just to hang out in the presence. Pastor Jesse, Pastor Aaron, they're going to come and hang on the presence. Like, I don't know, we just got to go hang on the presence. Hmm. Wow. There's something on that. Really. <laughs> you know, the Lord has really been uh, speaking to me. I, uh, it was maybe about a week before we came down here, I was asking the Lord, you know, we're going to be at different ministries and we're going to be diff visiting different churches. I said, but Lord, what is it that you have? for this house, you know, and the Lord began to speak to me on something, brother, and I, I, and, and I don't have the fullness, and I, let me tell you what, this is how God is, I had a whole thing planned out, dude, I had the words, I had the scriptures, I had all this, and I left them in San Antonio, in Alabama, you see, in Alabama, uh, I left them in Alabama, and I was like, Lord, 
And so I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the, you know, I'm in this room today, and I'm, I'm just asking, Lord, why did you have me leave all my stuff, man? I felt like I was like hours in this. Why? And I'm so, I'm so okay, let me, let me, let me backtrack, God. Where, where was I at, Lord? And he said, stop it. Stop it. So I stopped it. Boom. But he did tell me this. He said, I'm sending you guys to release a fire. Now, this is not just a fire like we, you know, we, we get so, we get involved in, in, in church lingo is like, you hear it in church all the time. The fire of God, fuego de Dios. So you hear all this stuff, man. But this is a different fire. I saw coals. I saw burning coals. And he said, you are going to go and you are going to deposit what I have given you. And I tell you what, man. Recently, we've been traveling, and we've been doing a lot of ministry in a lot of different areas, and the Lord allowed us to be a part of something very recently, and I got something from the Lord that I'm carrying, and normally, I don't say something like this, but man, I know that I know that I'm carrying this thing. I don't doubt it, and we're here to release what God's given us today. We're going to release what the Lord has. The, the thing about coal. Coal is found in the very depths of the earth, about a mile deep. And what coal is, when coal is ignited, it causes power. It's energy. You see, the Lord wants to ignite some people in here today. He's going to ignite some people in here tonight because there's an energy that's coming forth from this place. You know, it's not... It's not a coincidence that we have pastors in this house and we have young leaders. Man, I want to honor our Radio Jesus youth that are in the building. Man, you guys are awesome. Yes, I want to, because you guys are the generation, the Joshua generation that is going to go forth and you will chop the head of the giants. Bam! You see? Oh, God, okay. So this coal is found like... Miles down. Do you know how far a mile is? Okay, I just drive like to McDonald's. McDonald's, right? McDonald's, right? Drive to McDonald's about a mile down. That's a long drive, man. Okay, can you imagine going down deep into the, the core of the earth to dig this thing up? It's fossil fuel. It's going to burn deep inside and in the depths of our soul and the depths of our heart. This cold is going to ignite a fire that's going to raise up a generation. You're going to see the dead raised and the sick healed. You know, we have to believe this thing. We have to believe it. We have to understand what it is. <laughs> you know, I just, man, I feel the presence of the Lord. And I just, man. Mmm. Oh, yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord, right now. <laughs> Lord, release your power. <laughs> release your power tonight, God. That everybody in this place, God, would be impacted tonight, God. Everybody, every aisle, every chair, God, would be impacted. Impacted tonight, God. Impacted. Pastor Jesse said it when he prayed. He says, Lord. <laughs> that they would not be the same. That they were leaves not the same. I tell you what, it's really thick up here, and I'm having a hard time walking. Wow. <laughs> Fire of God, come. Fire of God, be released even now. Make your way through every place. Wow. Hmm. Yes, God. Mm. Yes, Lord. Oh, 
Man. Are you guys excited? Yes, Lord. Mm. <laughs> Man, I just feel like there's an urgency in the spirit. I just feel it. Like, where do we go from here, God? Where do we go, God? And, and I feel like, ah, this is not even me. <laughs> oh. You see, because I encountered the king. I had an encounter with the Lord, and I've known the Lord all my life. I grew up in church. I grew up in the youth group. I grew up. But this past week, something happened. I encountered him. And I'm wrecked. I'm wrecked. And I can't, I can't. I'm up here and I'm like, God. (laughs) Oh. You don't even know. You want to know? I want, I want you to know. Ah, okay. Lord, get ready. <laughs> I'm going to let Alice come up and share something before we go further because this is, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Lord, um, when I was sitting here in worship, I just, um, there was two angels that were sitting in the audience and they were all in gold and there were two, it was two, two men. And I just kept staring at him and I, and I just kept hearing the word messenger, messenger. And I was sat back there and they, they came to sit with me. And they were so hilarious. <laughs> they were so funny. And the Lord just wants us to get to this place. See, in order to get into the heavenly places of God, we can't be so serious. You know, he really wants us to get to a place where we can just let him come in and take over and not be so serious. And they were just pushing me around and making me laugh. And, 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 and I knew why they showed up. I just knew that the sp- sweet spirit of God was just going to come in this place. And like Pete was saying, just wreck us. And see, children enter in heaven so easily because they have nothing on their mind. There's no fear. There's no nothing there. And God comes in and just touches them. And that's where he wants us to be tonight. I want you to just right now, whatever you came in here with, your workload, your whatever, your busyness, some of you are even sitting there and thinking of things you have to get done. Just stop the thinking. Stop the stinking thinking. Because God wants to show you something tonight, and he wants to take you somewhere, and you can't get there if you're up here. See, you have to allow your inner man to begin to arise and begin to take you somewhere. And if you cannot trust enough in God to just say, God, just take over all of me. Take over my mind, my heart, my spirit, my soul. Just consume me with your goodness. He will come in and he will consume you like never before. And the one thing God just kept telling me why the messengers were here was because I was supposed to share this story with you. See, before Radio Jesus became Radio Jesus and before we started getting sent out and before the big conferences came and before all these good things started, it started with me being at his feet. And it started with us locking ourselves up in a secret place with the Lord and really just spending time with him. And it took us sacrificing ourselves and laying ourselves down before the Lord before we could even get into anything else. 
we had to come and we would sit hours and hours in a room and we would put worship music on and we would just spend time with the Lord and they were the most precious times for us when we encountered him, when heaven bent over. See, when you just spend time with the Lord, heaven literally comes bent over and showers you with his love and his goodness. And so those were the times when I would sit there and I would say, I just love you. I just love you, Daddy. And your little girl is here just wanting to spend time with you. So I know you, you're very busy, but I know you and you'll make time for me. And so I know you'll come and you'll embrace me and you'll love me and you'll spend time with me. And I know that you'll take all my worries away, all my burdens away. And in my worship, if I'm sick, guess what? You're going to heal me in this worship because sickness can't be in heaven. And when heaven comes and bends down to touch you, you're healed. There was one time specifically I was in church and we had to get ready to do a youth event that we had. We had a flip it night. And I was so sick, and I was just like, God, I'm so sick. My head feels like it's just crushing, and I feel horrible, and I just can't do this. And I said, but I have to. I have to because I have to be there for the next generation that they see that I'm not, I don't allow the enemy to come in and consume me so much to a point where I'm not going to do what God has me doing. So I remember stepping into the church that day. And I remember laying on the floor, and we had worship music on, and nobody was there. It was just me, Pete, and one of our youth who showed up early. And when I was sitting there, I was just sitting there, and I, and I was just like, Lord, I love you, Lord. I just love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I just want to be with you, Lord. Like, Lord, can you just send your presence, Lord, because I just need your healing hand right now. And as I began to do that, God, heaven, broke open, and the angelic came in the door. And every time in my life that I've been so desperate and in a need for God, he always sent the angelic. And that's why these messengers are here tonight, because he's bringing a message from heaven. Heaven is here tonight, and you have to learn to be discernment, have discernment to know when heaven's in the room. Heaven shows up every day. And sometimes we don't even know what it looks like, what it feels like, and we just shut it down because we're thinking. But if you just stop thinking and just say, what do you, what do you want to show me, God? What's in the spirit room that I need to see today? He shows you the angelic. He shows you the heavenly things, and it just begins to just come in the room. See, we're atmosphere changers, and we come in wherever we go, and see, we don't let all the junk and the drama consume us. We come in empowered by the light of Jesus, and we say the atmosphere has to change because we're in the room, and we carry Jesus inside. And so, so I was going to Alabama, and I didn't know what was in Alabama. I just knew God said to go. And the enemy came real quick and tried to put fear in me and try to put, you're leaving your family, you're doing this, you're doing that. And all the way to Alabama, see, nobody knows this, but I was just crying and crying and crying. And I was driving by myself because my husband was driving our U-Haul. And I just remember spending time with the Lord. And I said, God, this is such a difficult choice for me to leave our kids, our youth, our, our families, our everything, and just go to this place with you. But I know that you're with me. And I know that I have to steadfast and trust in you. And I'm driving all the way over there. And we literally barely crossed over into Alabama. And we were coming close to where we were going to live at. And all of a sudden, to the left side of me, 
I was like so tired because it was so late at night. And I looked to the left and I began to see this huge, huge, huge transformer. I mean, it was as high as the sky. And I said, and it freaked me out and I go, oh my God. I said, this is like a massive transformer, like bigger than the one that's in the movies. Like it's massive. And I just, and, and, and I'm looking at all the parts and I'm looking and the transformer is right along my truck. And the transformer is going like this. And every step the transformer would take, I could feel the land shifting and I could feel the power of this transformer. And I was like, I could fear the fear, the fear of God all at the same time with his goodness. And I was sitting there and I was like, oh my God, like I don't even want to move because what if the transformer sees me and he's going to like, it's like, I know it's you, Lord, but I don't know what it is. And so I see the transformer. I can feel the presence of God and the fear of God all at the same time. And I'm like, oh my God. And, and I can feel, and my truck's still driving. I'm still going and I'm still driving. And the transformer is moving with me. But the strides that he took didn't have to be as many because he was so big and these long legs. And as I continued to, to look at him, I continued to stare at him. And I was like, this is out of this world. And um, I just saw the angel that was inside of the transformer. And his legs were, they were so massive. They were so muscular. And they had glory all over the legs. And I remember that I could just feel heavens on his legs, like just this massive glory. And, and they were huge and they were big, like bigger than Hercules, bigger than like all these movies we see. And they were humongous. And on top of the, on top of the legs was this beautiful white gown. And he had a gold belt around him. And on around his belt, <laughs> he had um, he had this, this crown on his head, and it was gold. And above, on the top of his head was this blazing fire, blazing fire. And I remember not even wanting to move because I was like, God, you are so powerful. You are so powerful, God. And I just know that we are going to be equipped to move in power with your heavens, Lord. We are going to be so equipped to move in the power that you give us, Lord. And there's not going to be no questions from me anymore, God, because I know you've sent us with the transforming angel, Lord, that wherever we go, transformation is going to go with us. So I'm sitting in our studio this past two weeks before we came, and I didn't understand it, and I was like, I knew I had seen this angel. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what it was for, and I'm sitting there, and I'm before the Lord, and I'm just in worship, and I'm just like going after it all by myself with some worship music on, and I was like, God, I'm going back to where it started. I'm going back to where it was just me and you, and you and me, and we're going to spend time together, and I'm going to stop everything in my day, and I have to get before you, and I have to get before what you want me to know before I even leave this city. I have to know. There's an urgency, like Pete says, to know what God is speaking. We have to know. We are his people. He is our king. If we don't know what he's speaking, we're going to be lost. We're going to be destroyed by the enemy. And we're going to be in places we are not supposed to be. And so I said, God, I'm coming before you. And I know who I am. And I have my identity in you. And I need you to come. And I need you to just show me what I need to see. 
And he reminded me of a shirt that my husband had made for us months ago. And I don't even think my husband even realized it. But it was of a transformer printed on the shirts. And it said, more than meets the eye. This was done months before we even got to Alabama. God was preparing us. And so then it was, it was a scripture on it. What was it, Pete, the scripture on the shirts? It was Romans 12, 2 that he had placed on there. And it talks about that. And it talks about being transformed. And, 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 and Pete's talking about this fire. And he's talking about the coals. And, and you know what? The power and the surging and the electricity and the power that the coals bring, it comes with power. It comes with power. And not our power, but the power of God, the king of all kings, God. And he comes with this great power. And let me tell you, you think you are little problems or anything for the Lord? He is a man of great power. Mm. I'm going to tell you that tonight he's going to shake this place. And he's going to shake it so bad and you're going to feel exactly what I felt that day when I drove into Alabama and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And then you're going to feel the fear and the love and the goodness all at one time. And he's going to shake your spirit so much that there's going to be such an awakening that you're going to want to just cling to the Lord. Because that's what it did for me. I can't stop clinging to his robe. I can't stop clinging to him and saying, God, where are you, God? Where are you, God? Because I can't hear you, God. I can't see you, God. Where are you, God? Because I need you, God. There's nobody here, God, but me and you, God, and I need you, God. And when the leaders are gone and your pastor's gone and everybody gone, guess what? It's just you and him, and you have to say, God, where are you, God? Because I need you, God. Where are you, God? Because I need you. I need you to show up today. <laughs> And there's a real God with a real heaven, with real manifestations of power. And you can't go out and speak to people about God without the power of God with you. You can. People are not going to hear you. They're not going to see you. Because it has to take the power of heaven to come down to manifest so people can understand what kind of God we serve. He is not this wimpy God that lays down at the enemy's feet, but he is a God of power and might, and he moves things, <laughs> and he shifts things, and he splits the sea. <laughs> he splits the sea in half so his people can walk through. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> he is a mighty God. <laughs> and he makes things happen. <laughs> no longer will our words go without power. <laughs> no longer will the people cry out and will not receive anymore. <laughs> But they will begin to receive his goodness because that's the kind of God we serve of goodness, of love, and of compassion. Oh, God. Oh, I could just feel his fire all over me right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Shinti Mokuro Sisi. Heaven will invade tonight. 
it will have its way in this place tonight. <laughs> and if it's too much for you, I, you better just leave. Because God is coming in this place tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She did Mokoro City Bashati, Biakoro City Moshati, Biokoro City Moshati, Bashata Makaria City Moshatomo Koro City Moshati, Biakaria City. You cry out to him, <laughs> you cry out to your Lord. I can't cry out for you. You have to cry out for him. I can't go before you and say, this person needs something. You have to cry out for him. You have to want him. You have to be so desperate for him that you say, God, where are you, God? Where are you, God? <laughs> I need you, God. Where are you, God? And you got to keep searching for him until you find him. Yes. Oh, Lord. Man. Stay in this atmosphere. Stay in this atmosphere. Just keep your eyes closed and focus on you and the Lord. It doesn't matter who's next to you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus. 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 See, he's given an invitation today, tonight. He's given you an invitation tonight. Mm. An invitation for that burning fire, the coals to burn deep inside. You see, what Alice was releasing, she was releasing encounters she's releasing encounters do you want to encounter the king tonight how are you responding yes Lord Father right now awaken us God awaken our spirits God that we can encounter you tonight God that we will feel your presence, God. That you will burn inside us, God. Take us deep. Take us deeper, Daddy. Take us deeper, Daddy. We release the fire, God. The fire from heaven, Lord. And you will not leave the same. The 
Let me have the lady of Jesus you. Come on up here, please. Come on up here, please.
of ours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, I know it's getting late and uh, I know the presence is still here and I'll be here. Um, but I want to, uh, before anybody else leaves, I want to give you opportunity to sow into this ministry. Um, I've been given the opportunity with Radio Air Jesus. I think it's been about three years now, uh, every Tuesday and uh, we have a, a radio show, and uh, literally, Radio Air Jesus meets the needs of nations because the nations need to hear about Jesus. And, uh, you know, I could put money into a local radio show or I could put money into a Internet radio show. And with the Internet radio show, I was talking to Pete just the other day, and, and uh, our show averages between 500 to 1,000 listeners every week uh, over 20 countries. And, and you just, you can't, there, there's, you don't make that kind of impact with that little effort, except with the communication age we're living in. And the reason I'm telling you this is that you have an opportunity right now to sow seed, not just for your region, but for around the world. And, and you've got to get a, a picture of this in your mind. To understand that you will plant seed in Africa, in India, in Pakistan, in all these different countries. You have an opportunity to do that right now. And, you know, God's kingdom is ever increasing, right? It's ever growing. And I want to give you opportunity. Listen, the way we work here at Living Word is when this offering is getting picked up right now, we don't take a dime of what you're going to give right now. I don't mess with God's money. Okay? And so whatever you give right now, I want you to know is going to go directly to Radio Air Jesus. A percentage, not, no, no, all of it, last penny is going to Radio Air Jesus so that your seed will reach nations. So I'd ask you to prayerfully consider right now. If you got it in your purse, get it out of your purse. If you got it in your pocket, get it out of your pocket. If God tells you to give $1,000, give $1,000. It's going to Radio Air Jesus. Okay, This has nothing to do with Living Word Church. It has everything to do with the ministry that's reaching nations that you're getting an opportunity to sow in right now. So if you want to sow into this fertile ground, I, I ask you, come right now, drop it in the basket, and know that your seed is going to be fruitful and multiply.
Well, okay. Um, for those in the room, I want to let you guys know that recently we, uh, Radio Earth Jesus has, uh, we've been in the beta stages for some time developing an online Christian television network. And the Lord has really, really just kind of given us a lot of creative ideas and creative thought and how we're supposed to do this. And uh, we have been running now since maybe November, and now it's, pretty, it's really fully functional. So I want to encourage you guys to, if you have access to a smartphone, if you have access to uh, any kind of mobile device, an iPhone, to download our app. It's called Radio Air Jesus. If you have an iPhone, you can go to the Apple Store and download it. If you have an Android, you can go to the Android Google Play Store, and you can download it, and you can watch our live television events. We're going to be streaming from conferences all over the planet. I'm believing for that. And we have been recently been able to be involved with some amazing ministries, and we have been seeing thousands, when I say thousands, I'm talking, we have been with thousands of people in a room where people are getting healed and God is moving and thousands of people are running to the altar to testify of their healing. And we're capturing it all on camera. And then what we're doing with this is we take this capturing of the camera and we release it and we put it out for everybody to see. Because he said, I have called you to be a ministry. I have called you to be crusaders of my exploits. What that means is that we are called to tell his story. And when the dead begin to get raised, we're going to broadcast it and we're going to tell the world. See, NBC, CBS, and Fox News, they're not going to do it. But Media Revival TV will. So I want to encourage you guys to get involved. And, and what you guys sowed in today, I want to tell you guys, Every part of this is really needed. Every part that you guys sow, it goes straight into the nations. And when I say that, I mean that with all my heart. We don't, it's, it just goes right out. And I'm believing for just God just to do something. So I want to thank you personally for everybody that sowed. And even those that are praying for us, you know, we really appreciate you, what God is doing this season. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys soon. We'll be in Houston tomorrow or yeah, Sunday, Sunday. Well, no, we're doing Saturday. We're doing Saturday. All right. Would you and uh, Alistair come up over here? Would you stand to your feet? Okay, y'all bear my voice, okay? Um, as we were worshiping, the moment that I came up here, because I was in the back for a little bit, the moment I came up here, the Lord said, an eagle. And I said, okay, Lord. So, give me more. Usually, he takes me right, right away to scripture. And today, he said, I need you to tell them what an eagle symbolizes. I said, well, I don't know that, Lord. And he said, you have an iPhone. Look it up. And um, what's funny is on the internet, you know you can go and search something, and you're going to hit a million things. But when you search, when God directs you, he takes you to the right thing right off. And so I literally just put, what does an eagle symbolize? And this is where he took me. It says, the eagle is a symbol borne by men of action occupied with high and weighty affairs. Who knows that the kingdom of God is a weighty affair? Amen. Amen. It was given to those of lofty spirit, ingenuity, speed and comprehension, and discrimination in matters of ambiguity. Who knows what that means? That's discernment. That's discernment. The wings signify protection. And then he said, tell them to remember this last line. The gripping talons symbolize ruin to evildoers. 
you guys, when I read this and it said, speed and comprehension, you guys aren't going to have time to go figure out what it means because you're on right now. You're live all the time. So that comprehension is going to be right there with you. It's going to be that transformer walking with you. That transformer, that's called comprehension. That transformer, that's called not just God. That's the change you're making. That's the discernment that's walking with you. You're never going to be without it. You're right. You're never without it. Never. When you felt that ground shaking, it wasn't just Alabama that was shaking. It's the nation. Would you stretch your hands toward him? Come on over. Stand right over here. Come on over here. Um, that portal right there. I'll tell you, right in the spot. There's an X on the floor. Stretch your hands. Everybody. The Lord says that, that um, you're talking about coal, but your embers and your coal. And, you know, the funny thing is I, I love going out with, like, you know, the boys and Naranjo boys, the little ones, because, you know, the funny thing about a fire is you can have a small fire, but if you fan it, you fan it, it looks like it's going to go out. But what actually happens is it rears up. It, it increases. Um, so, uh, <laughs> got to do what he tells me to do, right? Hallelujah. Stretch your hands right here. When I count to three, I want everyone to blow. Because we have people that represent embers and fire. And if you know anything about fire is you simply blow on the fire and it looks like it's going to go out, but it doesn't go out. It gets stronger when it comes back. It was amazing. They were like moss to the flame. I would sit there with a, a piece of cardboard and I'd fan it and they'd look at it like it's going to go out. And as soon as I backed off, it'd rear up and they'd come around it. And we want the nations to come around Radio Air Jesus. So I'm going to count to three and then I just want you to take a big deep breath and I want you to blow in this direction. And I don't care if you've taken a breath mint or not. This is a prophetic act that we need to do corporately. Amen? So just receive. One, two, three. bless you and keep you be with you every step of the way go before you go with you go after you that the residual anointing would be after you leave a place that people would still know that you're there even though you've left because you take the Lord with you Lord bless your health bless your finances bless your home bless your boys Bless your hands to work and bless your hands to war. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Be blessed. Uh, living Word, we've got... Over 100 countries being impacted worldwide. A global revival coming forth. A great awakening. Media Revival TV. Impacting and transforming a generation to encounter the power of God.